We're going to take a look at solving an inequality using a graph. For this particular situation, we're going to take a look at when y1 is less than y2. Notice that we have a picture over here of a graph from a Casio. And um, on this, this equation was in our y1 and this an equation was in our y2. So we're essentially looking for when this is less than uh, that. Notice over here that this is a thin line, so the graph of this equation in y1 is going to be represented by this thin line right here on the graph. This particular equation is in y2, and notice it has a thick line. That means that the thick line on this picture is going to represent that. In order to find out when the y1 is less than y2, we want to look for when this thin line is below the thick line. And notice that the thin line is below the thick line right in here. So that means that our solutions to when the y1 is less than y2 will start at the intersection here, and they're going to go this direction over here. Uh, so when we're solving this, we're actually solving for x. If I was to replace this equation in for the y1 here, and this equation in for the y2, it would look like 1 third x minus 2 less than 3x minus 10. We could solve this algebraically, or we could notice that that's just when the graph of the y1 is below the graph of the y2. And that happens right here and in this direction over here. Now, for this particular one, we are going to go ahead and um, use a interval notation. And because we're dealing with an inequality right here without the equal sign underneath it, we are going to be using a round bracket. In interval notation, when you have this symbol or that symbol, less than or greater than, without the line underneath it, you use round brackets in order to signify um, that you get as close to the value as possible without touching it. So in other words, we'd be looking for these x um, values starting right here with a round bracket going off in this direction. If you had this symbol or that symbol, which is the less than or equal to and the greater than or equal to, then instead of using a round bracket, you would use a square bracket, which would look like that. The square brackets signify that you actually do include the value. So now what we're going to do is for interval notation, we actually go ahead and we use the values as you go from left to right across the graph. And as we go from left to right, the first value we hit is right here. And notice if we count, since the scale is so that each tick mark is 1, if we count the tick marks, this starts at 3. But we don't include 3 because our inequality does not have the equals underneath it. So in interval notation, we would put a round bracket, and then 3, and then a comma. And then you continue on, and after the comma, you put the last thing you come to. Well, we actually go off into infinity um, because we, even though our graph stops at 10, we go on forever in this particular graph. We're not giving a boundary at the end. So this one here, the last thing that we'd actually hit is positive infinity. So we write the infinity symbol, and since you never reach infinity, we use a round bracket. And that's how you would go ahead and t interpret this graph um, and solve it. Basically, you can just look at it, find um, the intersection, which is right here, and then determine which side your y1 is less than the y2 or below the y2. And then um, go ahead and write your interval notation. If you were doing this um, and set notation instead of interval notation, uh, let me get rid of some of this so we have some room.
instead of writing it the way we did right here, we would actually use set brackets. And since we're looking for the x values, we do x such that, and then in this case, x is greater than 3, since we are on the larger side of 3 for the section that satisfies this statement up here. So make sure you watch your problems, whether it asks for interval or set builder notation, and write them in the appropriate manner.